would you describe the state of veteran owned businesses in New Jersey right now, uh, post COVID and as we're still trying to work our way into a healthier economy? So, so many veteran businesses, and when I say veteran businesses, I'm talking about veteran businesses, disabled veteran businesses, military spouse owned businesses have really uh, uh, just had a lot of difficult difficulty in navigating through the COVID pandemic. Uh, some of whom have shut their doors, unfortunately, because of the pandemic, and many of whom are struggling uh, because they can't get state contracts, uh, even though there's a 3% set aside in the state of New Jersey uh, that is public law, uh, the state currently is not really enforcing it that well. Uh, well, that certainly doesn't sound proper. Uh, what can be done about that? So we've had numerous conversations with uh, the Office of Diversity and Inclusion. We've had discussions with the governor's office. Uh, we uh, recently rolled out a training program to all 72 state agencies with procurement uh, power to try to educate them on you know, what this law is. And essentially what it says is 3% of all state contracts are to be set aside for disabled veteran-owned businesses. And uh, unfortunately, like uh, I can't even begin to tell you, maybe the state is at about a $2 million spend with disabled veteran-owned businesses when they should be at uh, a several hundred million dollars spend uh, based upon the total number of contracts. There has been some efforts over this whole period when COVID hit to set aside some grant money specifically for veteran owned businesses. Have those programs been able to help? So some of them have, um, and I will say uh, New Jersey Economic Development Authority has been absolutely fantastic in helping uh, the veterans community in get, getting access to some of these grants and loans, the EIDL loans, the, uh, you know, the CARES Act funding, which they were a lifeline to many, many uh, organizations and many businesses that were suffering so badly during the pandemic. Well, how are the needs of veteran-owned business owners different than other business owners? Veteran businesses have a much harder uh, time gaining access to capital. And the Federal Reserve Bank actually published a study in 2018 to show that uh, veteran businesses just don't have the access to capital that the non-veteran counterparts do. And if you think about it, when veterans were out serving, when they were deployed to Iraq and Afghanistan and all these places, um, they were there serving their country. When non-veterans were here building their business and helping to build networks and uh, just meet people to help them grow their business, Despite some of these obstacles we've talked about, do you still see a lot of interest among those who serve the country in terms of setting up their own business? A study was done um, that showed that the amount of veterans that are starting their own businesses has declined rapidly uh, since World War II. Um, it's only about 4% of veterans that start their own business. Uh, my thinking is that that's going to increase because there are fewer and fewer jobs coming about due to technology. Um, and so there's gonna be a need for, for more veterans to start their own business or maybe go into a franchise. The governor and the, legislator, the legislature here in New Jersey really need to think through how to best support the veterans business community. And I know this is Veterans Day and it's, you know, it's one of the times that people think uh, about veterans, but we need to be able to compete in the open bid process. We need the help to gaining access to capital. We need the help in gaining access to markets and networks. And you know we don't normally have that. Well, thank you so much for giving us a state of what's going on with veteran-owned businesses in New Jersey. And of course, thank you as well for your service. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. Thanks for watching. For more clips and episodes of NJ Business Beat, subscribe to the NJ Spotlight News YouTube channel.